Your dash in life may be over. You may have your final due date today, October 10th, 19, no, 2015. What was I thinking? I'm in another decade. See, I'm a sinner. I make mistakes. Today may be the day that you enter into the gates of eternity. Now, which gates are you going to enter? Into heaven by the Lord Jesus Christ or by hell, everything else. But, we have a couple people, oh, where are the results? I don't know. I'm not here for results. <clears throat> I am here because the Bible says, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. I let God do the results. I had no dashes and marks on my belt on how many people I got saved. I don't know. I let God keep count. He has a book called Numbers. I'll just keep on preaching the truth. I'll keep on preaching about hell. I'll keep on preaching about heaven. I'll keep on preaching about only Jesus Christ and His shed blood. I'll let God take care of the rest. And when I get to heaven, I'll have the numbers. My crowns. And not praise in the church. This brother got 14,000 people saved in a city of 5,000. Yay! No, the free gift is the Lord Jesus Christ and this woman receives the gift and you go about your business rejecting. And you'll stand before God one day and say, God, I never knew. Well, I'm sorry to tell you, I have left you without an alibi. I have left you without an excuse because I know you can hear me because you report to me you can hear me. And when I preach the Lord Jesus Christ, you have no excuse to, re to reject him and stand before God and say, I never knew. He'll maybe call me up or record this back to you and you get to hear this loud mouth all over again as this word being preached to you will be condemned to you to be off into hell for all eternity where these words being preached to you now can be the entrance into heaven by the Lord Jesus Christ which we preach. You may hate my words now and I know you do. You'll hate my words that they will put you off into hell for rejecting the words. Then you'll wish I listen. Then you wish you had. You're going to wish everything, but you won't get it. Salvation is now. Now is the time. Prepare to meet that God, the Bible says. Are you prepared? When you die, all your luggage is left behind and fought among your children and your family. You're not taking it with you. Oh, give God money. Where are you going to put that money in that naked body? Listen, the suit remains, the body doesn't. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes. And Jesus said unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. Go get your husband, lady. Uh, until we read the rest of the verse. But Jesus leaves her with the question, go get your husband. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Hey, those motorcycles are louder than I am. No, has w the woman said, I have no husband. Why don't you sound some motorcycles? They're louder. I have no husband. And Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. See, Jesus knows your marital status. <laughs> For thou hast five husbands, and the he whom thou now hast is not thy husband, in that thou truly, uh, that thou says thou truly. Now, I'm not going to preach on adultery. I am not going to preach about fornication. But I am. But I'm not. He says, go get your husband. She says, I ain't married. She says, okay, yep. You have four and the one right now. Well, let me tell you, my friend. Let me tell you a personal story. A testimony of my story. April 20th. 
you. 1987. I had many sins in my life. April 21st, the Lord said, bring your husband. I ain't got no husband. I ain't got no sins. What's wrong with me? There's nothing wrong with me. I'm good. I'm a Catholic. What could be wrong with me? I'm protected by the Pope. When I die, someone's going to say prayers and burn candles for me. Come on, so I got saved. I realized my family hated my guts, but I'm a Catholic. I'm doing well. And Joseph Caswell up off the Bible and said, you're not well. You're sick. You got four or five husbands. You got four or five sins in your life, including number one, you have rejected the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. I said, brother, I eat Jesus. I drink Jesus. He said, that ain't it. You love Jesus too. Thank you very much. Any more? I'm going to put a sign here. Two, if you love Jesus. I'll stop you. And I probably will. I don't underestimate the power that I do. This brain thinks. Uh, but listen, I said I eat Jesus. I drink Jesus. And I was shown by the Bible that's not good enough. Matter of fact, I was shown in the Bible. All have sinned. Uh-oh. I got four or five more sins. Four or five more sins. And I was smoking cigarettes and I was drinking. I brought my own Bart Bacardi to every party I went. I was a BYO when I partied. And I ain't bragging. But Bacardi's couldn't heal me. Marlboro couldn't satisfy. Sex wasn't long enough. Cash. I had no cash, so I wasn't rich enough. Who I am? Who cares who I am? What am I amongst all the people in China? Just China, never mind the world. I'll tell you who I am. I am someone that when Jesus went to that cross, died for my sins, all of them. Not just one, not just two. I wasn't so vile that I couldn't come to Jesus. I got a life. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. I love the input today. Thank you. You're encouraging me to keep on going. But I was talking about my sins. And when Jesus came to me and said, bring your sins, I said, I had no sins. And when they opened the Bible, I said, you know what? I'm a sinner. He said, sinner, where are you going? I said, I'm going to hell. Hell! I am going to hell. April 21st, 1987, if I had dropped dead, I would have gone into hell with my religion. And... With an open Bible, Joseph Caswell, Stonington, Connecticut, showed me the way, the truth, and the life. And I got down on my knees at my grandmother's coffee table, 773 Broad Street Extension, Waterford, Connecticut, 06385, I think. I don't know. It's recorded. I didn't want to go to hell. I didn't know anything else. I didn't want to go to hell. I knelt down that coffee table and I asked some way, some form. I don't have the words that are recorded in heaven. I asked Jesus to save me. I asked Jesus to come into my life. I trusted at that point, April 21st, 1987, I trusted everything upon the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the liquor went away. The cigarettes went away. The sins went away. And the Bible was open. And that next Sunday morning, I went to church. I told everyone what had happened. I went Sunday that afternoon. I went home to my father and I said, Dad, you're going to hell. I have been preaching hell since the day I've been saved, and I'm not giving up. Because without Jesus Christ, that's where you're going to go. You're going to go to hell. 
One sin will put you into hell. Rejecting Jesus Christ as your Savior will put you in hell. And I'm going to be a stop sign. I'm going to be a roadblock. I am going to be a construction code. I am going to be whatever I can be to stop you from going to hell. You're going to have to jump over this hurdle. You're going to have to jump over this book. You're going to have to outright reject God before you go to hell by the preaching I do. But when I get to heaven, I will hear from God, my Savior, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. What will God say to you? Will you hear, well done, or will you hear, depart from me? Those are only two statements God will make. Yeah, I'm loud. So is that train. So are the motorcycles. So is your music. But they can't save you. You've been at parties that have been louder than I am. You have been at concerts louder than I have been. And yet, this ball game was louder than I am, yet they cannot save you. They are not about God. You don't reject the voice of my loudness. You reject the message I'm giving you. Continue to reject the message, and it will come back to haunt you at the great white throne judgment. And we're not done. He's dealing with her sins. The woman says unto him, ah, Sir, I perceive thou art a prophet. I'm no sinner. That's exactly what I said. And yet I was. As stupid as I was, I'm not a sinner. I got no sins. The police has taken one. We'll get into that in a minute. I once in my life told the guy with the Bible, I have no sins. Wow. Thanks to breast kiss, I've been married twice. Ask my wife if I'm a sinner. I'll walk away. Ask my children if I'm a sinner. Ask them. I'm not afraid. I'm a sinner. I'm a saved sinner. Then you ask my children, is there a surety in my life that when I die, I know where I'm going to go? To know Jesus, but do you live for Him? Listen, salvation didn't change who I am. I'm still in the flesh. Salvation changed my destination. I've still got diabetes. I've still got bad legs. I haven't been to a healing preacher, but I've been to Jesus for healing. I'm here to tell you that salvation may not get rid of your disease. Salvation may not grow a new arm. Salvation may not heal all your bones. But salvation will heal where you go when you die. And these things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. I know it. Since April 21st, 1987. Our fathers worship in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Hey, she gets into religion. St. Mary's Catholic Church, Huntington Street, New London, Connecticut, Father Fontaine was going to lead me to hell. I ate Jesus. A little magic hocus pocus. I drank the blood. I didn't go in the closet. Woo, thank you. If I go in the closet, who knows what happened with that priest? I'm a little boy back then. Whoa. Thank you, Lord. I had religion. Let me tell you a little bit about myself again. If I may. No, like you guys are going to stop me. I'm going to say it anyway. But let me tell you something else about myself. My great-grandparents, Pukuses, were Polish. My children are in trouble. They were Polish Roman Catholic.
pamphlet. They came to America through Ellis Island. I'm happy of that. I have aunts and uncles born up in a Roman... Listen, if you're Polish, Roman Catholic, you're more Catholic than you are of the Italians because the popes come from Poland. If there's anybody who is more dedicated to serving that church, it's Polish. And I was of that breed. And yet, I wasn't saved. I wasn't going to heaven. I was trusting in religion and not God. This woman comes up and says, Well, you know what? I did everything my church told me to do. And Jesus, Woman, believe me! <laughs> hey, Jesus, I got religion. Jesus says, Woman, believe me! You know what Mary's going to tell you? You're wrong. She told you in the Gospel of John, whatever my son says, do it! Then he made the water and the wine. Hey, sorry. The mother of Jesus told you to do what her son told you to do, not what she said. But upon religion, he says, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet in Jerusalem worship the Father. Here we are, 2015, Daytona Beach, Florida, IAA, worshiping God for where there are two or three gathered together in my name. There I am, a mix them. Here is Jesus Christ in Daytona Beach, Florida. We don't need to go to Jerusalem. We don't need to go to the, 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 the dumb mountain, the dumb rock, whatever it's called. We don't need to take pilgrimages. We don't you. I will never leave thee. I will never forsake thee. How's that? Religion's never a place. So if I say, are you saved? I go to church. Uh, that's a place. And Jesus is saying, it's not a church. Building. If you're saved, you are actually the church. According to the Bible. Here's a guy for Jesus. Thank you. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship Him. If you want to do right, truly want to do right, here's the offering. Here's the invitation. God is here. You don't take God orally. You take Him by faith. God is not interested in magazine sales. God is not interested in your underwear. God is not interested if you got wet. God is not interested in how many degrees you got on the wall. God is interested in what have you done with the blood of my son that he shed upon Calvary that you may have life and have life more abundantly. That's the question. I've never seen that question on any TV game show host. Who cares about stars? Who cares about television? Who cares about mountains? I care about the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what God cares about. That's the only thing God cares about. God is a spirit. And they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and truth. So if you take Jesus as bread and as liquid, that's not a spirit. Well, they may call it spirits as far as the drink. But that's satanic spirits. you got to take God by faith and by spirit. He don't want your body. It's full of filth. And if you don't think your body is full of filth, let's uncover your body ten years after you have died.
outside with no embalming fluid will see how filthy your body is. You've never seen a body on a battlefield. You've never seen a body after a building has been blown out. You've never seen a body that's been sitting dead, decaying in the streets. Thank God I haven't. The fact is that you decompose as you die shows you're not clean. The fact is that you die shows evolution is wrong. If evolution was true, we don't need no more graveyards. Aren't we supposed to be improving? But we're not. Bring me a monkey that's recently turned into a man. No proof. The woman said unto him, I know that Messiah is coming, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Uh, not only do you have this loud mouth, angry, vicious person behind a microphone with a Bible in his hand. Oh, keep your children away from him, but give them to your priest. Uh, not only have you got me here. But you know in America it's hard to go to hell when you've heard hymns, you have read church signboards, you got a radio station that kind of preach the truth. We're going the far way. Even your famous worldly singers have sung, sung some hymns. They all have to. I don't know why, but they all got to sing the hymns. You have heard Amazing Grace. You have in your head today, which may be gone tomorrow, you do have the acknowledge of Jesus Christ some way, somehow. Some of you do know that he was born of Mary. Some of you know something about a cross. Some of you know that, okay, he's a teacher. Right? You, you have some knowledge of Jesus Christ some way, somehow. So did this woman. She knew who the Messiah was. So she wasn't Bible ignorant. Only the churches today are making you Bible ignorant. See, they're giving you other stories that are not in the Bible. We'll give you patches. We'll give you programs. But we won't give you David and Goliath. We won't bring you Lazarus in hell. We won't bring you uh, the man that was in the tree. I forget his name. We won't tell you about Father Abraham. We won't tell you about Solomon. But we'll tell you about little boys playing with their doggies in the afternoon. Little girls playing with their dolls. And we'll tell you about all kinds of neat little stories which are called fiction. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but fiction means lies. So you're going to give the gospel a bunch of people starting off with a lie and you have not read John 8.44. if you're glad to be here. If you're glad to be here, too. Yeah. Guess not. Listen, if you start off with fiction, a lie, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody can see God. How can they get saved by fiction? That's up to you and Lord. I just wanted to throw that out there. I just want to throw that out there. Okay. The woman said unto him, I know Messiah is coming, verse 26. And Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. 